New year, new me. Not quite, but a new episode of the Joey Wright Show is here. I'm your host, Joey Wright, and today we're going to talk to my friend Matt Harrington. Matt, a fellow freshman at Bradley University, also a sports communication major, does a lot for the sport of hockey in his home state of Minnesota. He's from St. Paul, a company called MN Hockey TV. They stream youth and high school hockey up there, and we're going to talk to him about what that's like. Coming up next, we're back from... We're back, and it is my honor to introduce our only guest of today's program from St. Paul, Minnesota, fellow freshman at Bradley University, Matt Harrington. Matt, great to have you with us this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Joy. Yeah, you bet. Now, Matt, there's you do so much back home in St. Paul, um, but first I want to have you just tell a little bit about yourself so viewers can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, so I'm, as you mentioned, a freshman at Bradley University, and uh as, again, you mentioned, from St. Paul, Minnesota, I do a lot of work with high school hockey back in Minnesota, so I do uh, broadcasting, stuff like that, and we stream games online. Absolutely. Uh, the service that you work with is uh, mnhockey.tv. That's the website where you can go to stream high school hockey. Uh, explain a little bit about what mnhockey.tv is. Yeah, um, so we go to different high schools around the Twin Cities area, and we um, basically we work with certain schools. So we'll, we have like contracts with certain schools, and they will uh, pay us to stream like either some or all of their home games throughout the season. And then we also do some uh, other games like rivalry games across the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, we also stream some youth high school hockey as well. So um, basically, just working. Uh, around different areas in or around different schools in the area and streaming game, high school hockey games online absolutely and i know that uh hockey in minnesota i mean it's i imagine it's much bigger than any of the high school sports we have in illinois and, and just the way that people care about it and the way people treat it how big is the area that you guys reach um yeah that's a good question um so we most of the work that we do is on the west side of the metro and that's okay. kind of where um, some of the big schools are um, so we've got right now actually we have we have agreements with both the number one team uh, in the boys um, rankings and also the number one team in the girls rankings and so that is both of those schools are on the uh, west side of the metro and for boys Minnetonka and for uh, girls Edina uh, but we also do games uh, in some of the St. Paul areas as well. But um, we do a lot of the West Metro stuff because that is where kind of the uh, the uh, big teams are, the elite teams. And so um, that's where we do a lot of the work. But then, you know, there's all kinds of other big schools in the North Metro as well, kind of all over the place. And also there's teams that are from the North part of the state as well um, that will come down and play in games. So we cover some of those games as well when they come down. Sure, and I'm on the website right now filming this on January 2nd. Tomorrow, January 3rd, a, a big matchup between number one Minnetonka and uh, number 19 BSM. Um, that'll be fun. And then number one Edina and number 16 Blaine on the 5th, which is Friday. So a couple of big yeah. games coming up here uh, the rest of the week. Yeah, it's actually it, it works out nice because I believe our next three games – are all between ranked teams as well. And so that definitely makes for uh, some exciting action. And I think all three of those games are going to be uh, fun ones. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, absolutely. And just in, and I want to go back to this. I mentioned earlier, uh, high school hockey in Minnesota, I just I think you could maybe compare it to maybe high school football in Texas. I just don't think we have anything like that in Illinois where people are just so passionate about it. I mean, people like their high school basketball and, and their high school football around here, but Minnesota and hockey, it's just a different beast, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And, you know, every year we have the uh, high school hockey state tournament, which is played at the Excel Energy Center in downtown St. Paul, which is where the uh, NHL's Minnesota Wild plays. And that event is just truly something special. I mean, I've been going to it almost every year, and um, 
this year I'll get to be a media member for it, and so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, it's just they it's crazy. They sell it out. People wait hours in line for tickets. Um, so I mean, it's it's nuts. And I really, if you're a hockey fan, you know, living in Illinois or just anywhere in general, I'd really encourage people to go uh, to it one year. It's usually the first or second weekend of March, and it's just really an amazing experience overall. It's the weekend of March 9th this year, if I'm correct. Yep, yep, that is correct. Well, it's because you talk so much about it at Bradley, you know, it's... <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah. I'm excited for it, too, and that's a great opportunity that you have to be a, a credentialed media member. You showed me some pictures um, and videos, of course, of the state tournament, and I thought it was an NHL game, the way that arena was sold out and lit up, and it just was like... It's hard to believe that that's a high school state tournament. It really is. Yeah. Exactly, and uh, just the you have the bands playing as well, the student sections, you know, things that you don't get at a regular professional game, so that kind of adds to the different elements as well. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, was the, uh, no, the Target Center was the host of the NCAA Volleyball Championship where Illinois played um, yeah. a few weeks ago. Correct. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about NHL. Maybe at some point we'll come back to MN Hockey TV, you are a San Jose Sharks fan. Tell us a little bit about where that comes from, being from St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah, so um, I started liking the Sharks probably when I was about seven or eight. And uh, my dad grew up a little bit in San Jose. But, um, yeah, I just kind of became a Sharks fan really out of nowhere. I don't know why. I just kind of started liking them. But uh, at the time, they they're, were a pretty good team. And um, they haven't won a Stanley Cup yet, but... Hopefully that will happen uh, in the near future. Well, I've only been around since what ninety three, so yeah, yeah. So the other, other teams had a bit of a bit of a jump on them, and we went to a Blue Sharks game. Would have been first or second week in November, I want to say. That was a great experience, my first NHL game, and something like your twenty eighth Sharks game. You said something yeah, crazy something like, like that. that. I, yeah. I've been to quite a few over the years, so. Um, but yeah, I was. That was a fun game, even though the Sharks lost, but I'm sure you can relate to that the environment was really fun to be in as well. Yeah, beautiful arena they've got in St. Louis, the Enterprise Center. It's where they play the uh, Illinois-Missouri game each year. Uh, really a, a nice place to watch a, a ball game or a, yeah. or a puck game, I guess you could say, if we're talking about hockey. Right, right. <laughs> um, over to football, Minnesota Vikings fan. That's got to be tough, especially after this past week. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, not not a fun environment to be in uh, around some of the uh, other Vikings fans. But yeah, definitely a disappointing season. Um, we, you know, Super Bowl favorites really did, yeah. if you think about it, and then to not miss the playoffs. Yeah, but uh, I shouldn't be surprised because that's kind of what it's like to be a Vikings fan. So well, every year, heartbreak after heartbreak. Yeah. Kirk Cousins, something, something, his record against 500 teams, I don't know what it is, but it's not good. No, I think I saw something uh, like 5 and 25 or something like that. So, yeah, it's uh, not great at all, to say the least. No. and uh, But you've got to figure they'll look good next year, you know. Because uh, yeah. good team, good. Uh, the Bears really came out of nowhere in that division this year. I know they made the Khalil Mack trade, but I don't think anyone thought that they would be a 12-4 and 4 team even after that trade um, until, yeah, of course, I, the season started. I agree. And uh, I think kind of, though, that, Khalil Mack trade really turned around the franchise and yeah. just kind of gave them a new sense of life. And so I certainly think they're going to be a team to watch out for here in the playoffs in the next couple of weeks. Oh, no, for sure. I think what it was was Khalil Mack, he had a big week one against the Packers. And there were some people that were still on the fence about that trade after it happened. But after that first week, people were like, even though they lost that game, uh, people saw the potential that they had. Yep, exactly. Yep. So who is your playoff pick as the playoffs get set to get going this weekend? Uh, you know, I my view a little slanted because the Dallas Cowboys are playing, but uh, maybe <laughs> maybe you as an unbiased uh, observant might have a better uh, better take than I do. Yeah, you know, um, to be completely honest with you, even though I really do not like this team, I do think the Chicago Bears are going to win the Super Bowl. You think um, so? I, wow. I, I think they're just on – they're, they've been hot, and if you think about it, their three or four losses um, have been very close. And, you know, they lost to the Patriots by, what, a yard? And then there was mm -hmm. another game where they lost. They, I think it was Miami where they missed, like, a field goal or uh, something along those lines. But uh, I, I think Chicago is just 
too good. And they're hot at the right time, and I think they're going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, a lot a lot of other good teams in there. You've got um, New Orleans, of course, in the NFC, but um, and, of course, the Rams. But I do think the uh, Bears are going to win the Super Bowl, so I'm looking forward to seeing if that comes true or not. That's not a bad take. I, their defense... I think defense is, uh, they say defense wins championships, and now is when you see that proven. Um, that Bears defense is scary. Uh, the Chiefs haven't shown me a whole lot. The Chiefs probably would have been my pick a few weeks ago, but they haven't shown me a whole lot these past few weeks. Right. Yeah, and they kind of fell off, as kind of you were alluding to. Yeah. I think they lost like two out of their last three games or something like that. So um, they're still good, but yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens here. Yep. NFL playoffs, of course, begin this coming weekend. Um, over to Bradley, uh, filming this, as I mentioned earlier, on January 2nd, the afternoon of. Bradley begins their conference basketball schedule tonight against Northern Iowa. have the website pulled up here on my laptop. Uh, Matt, how do you see this one playing out? Bradley 8-5 and five and Northern Iowa 5-8, and eight, but Bradley has been up and down, to say the least, as this year has gone along. For sure. Yeah, you had the uh, the highs were, of course, the, the Thanksgiving tournament win in Cancun over Penn State, which was certainly a big win for them at the time. But then, yeah, they kind of stumbled, losing quite a few of their games to teams they probably should have beaten. So um, kind of a chance to start fresh for Bradley here as we begin the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, I think they will beat Northern Iowa tonight. I don't know if it'll be close or a blowout, but... Um, I think Bradley's going to win this one, and hopefully this will be a chance for them to uh, get some new momentum going here as we enter conference play. Yeah, for sure. It's a home game for Bradley uh, at Carver Arena. Uh, looking here, the all-time series goes to Northern Iowa. Slim margin, though, 31-30 to in favor of them. Um, and I will be at a few games over break. I'll travel back to Peoria. But both of both you and I work for the athletics department and Braves Vision, running cameras and occasionally doing commentary. Matt, tell us how that experience has been for you. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, just kind of getting to see the production side of things. And um, for those that don't know, the Missouri Valley Conference has sort of an agreement with ESPN where they'll uh, – do their games uh, line through ESPN three and ESPN plus. And um, even though they're kind of, you know, minor setups, it's definitely cool um, to go inside the production truck and see how that sort of all comes together. And then doing the camera operating is a lot of fun too. Um, so definitely a cool experience. You get to learn some cool things uh, from some really helpful people. So I've really enjoyed the experience so far. For sure, and what I like most about it is that it's it's real experience. I mean, they're ESPN broadcast that you're helping out with, and it's it's uh, definitely really cool to help out with those, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And then, uh, so I think it could, it's really helpful um, for going into the future and having those references after working at uh, places like that too, and, and a big name like ESPN. So hopefully that'll lead to something in the future yeah absolutely and that's what these years are about just getting experience and uh getting yourself out there that's why i brought back the joey ride show get a few more yeah, days yeah <laughs> and uh but a big reason why i brought the show back is because you and i were uh watching the old ones in our first few weeks on campus first few months and uh and uh, yeah <laughs> had some good laughs over how those old ones went for sure so yeah uh, Absolutely. So back to MNHockey.tv. Uh, you guys are on Twitter, uh, at yep. MNHockeyTV. Um, and I believe you run that Twitter account, do you not? I Yes, I do. I do uh, about probably 90% of the work on it. So, yeah, I do all of the uh, graphics that you see posted on there and uh, a lot of the other stuff as well. So that's uh, a lot of what I do at MNHockeyTV is the social media stuff as well. Yep. And you also run, that reminds me, you run a Sharks fan account on Instagram um, with over 10,000 followers. Yeah, I haven't been doing it uh, as much this year, um, but that was something I did uh, up to, I believe, I think I stopped like junior year. I started doing it a little bit this year, but just with school and everything, I just really couldn't keep up with it. But yeah, I did that for three or four years, so definitely enjoyed that when I did it. Sure, and that's and, and when Matt says that uh, he was too busy with school and working such, I mean, 
this was quite the undertaking because you would post edits, you know, scores at the intermissions and, uh, you know, pregame and postgame stuff and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, for sure. No, uh, no light undertaking, that fan account. Yeah, it was it's uh, it's hard work. So I uh, hope that people appreciated what I did, and um, maybe something I'll look into in the future if I have more time. But yeah, just right now, just kind of hard to do everything, being busy. Yeah. Well, you say the fans appreciated it. I understand that you had a player uh, request a picture from you or something at some point. Uh, yeah, I uh, one of the it was during the. Sharks run to the Stanley Cup final in 2016, and a player named Logan Couture, who was one of the top players on the Sharks, he uh, DM'd my account and said, can you send me that picture from the game or something along those lines? Thank you. And so I was like, whoa, I didn't even know like that he followed my account or anything. So uh, I sent him the picture, and then he posted it on Instagram, which was really cool to see. So that was definitely a unique experience. I bet. I bet for sure. Um, and when we went to that Sharks Blues game, you posted a few things on the Instagram story um, at the game, things like that. So, yeah. Matt, anything? Uh, well, here, here's one NHL 19 we've been playing lately. Uh, Matt, yeah, two nothing all time series lead on me, but I'm coming. Yeah, you look good uh, in your your two games. So you had a little bit of a rough start your first game, but oh I think you've settled in nicely, so maybe you'll beat me someday. Maybe. Well, oh, so, okay. It was 2 <laughs> nothing we played last night, um, but yeah, that first game we played, Matt uh, got some early goals on me, and I uh, ramped up my defense after that, kept it close, but and that's one thing, knowing Matt, I was not a huge hockey fan when I moved onto campus uh, back in August, but uh, I've slowly come to, well, and I, I liked hockey, but I didn't follow it very intently, but now I'm beginning to get into the sport a little more, and it's, uh, you know, right now I only watch it uh, in the playoffs, but playoff hockey is something something unlike anything else. Yeah, I love playoff hockey, and for me personally, I think it's uh, the best playoff atmosphere. I mean, the fans are electric, and the stadium, of course, as well, but, you know, playoff football is great too, but I just don't think there's anything that you compare to a, a grueling seven-game series uh for playoff hockey it's a lot of fun well there was a stanley cup final a few years ago i remember watching i don't remember which one but there was a it might have been king's blackhawks um i think it was where one of the games it might have been the clincher i don't know went into like three overtimes you, um you, you would know what series that was it may have been like uh i don't think the actual series was one in three overtimes but yeah. there's been uh some games that have gone to three overtimes. I know the the Sharks and Predators played each other in, I think, 2016, and I think it was like game four went into three overtimes. Um, there was another game, too, that went to four overtimes. Um, yeah. I think the record is six overtimes, and rarely it gets to that point, but, <laughs> yeah, that's something that usually the other sports don't get to, so that makes for uh, a lot of fun and exhausting for the players. Yeah. And the only other examples I can point to from other sports, you had that 18-inning World Series game this year. Occasionally you'll see a, an NFL playoff game go into, uh, there's been a few that have gone into double overtime. Um, and occasionally a, a basketball game will go into overtime. But definitely, uh, definitely something you see more of in hockey. And it's more intense when that happens in hockey, it being sudden death. So Matt, anything else you want to hit on? Um, here on the Joey Wright Show this afternoon. I know you are obviously just such a busy man up there in St. Paul. You've maybe got some yeah. projects in the works or anything you want to speak of? Um, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Just thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to getting back to Bradley for semester number two. And absolutely. Classes for the second semester begin on January 23rd. A big thank you to Matt Harrington joining us on the Joey Wright Show this afternoon. We'll be back to close things down after this.
I want to say thank you one more time to Matt Harrington for taking the time out of his day to join us on the Joey Wright Show this afternoon. That'll do it for our episode today. I want to let the inter I want to let that interview speak for itself. All that they do at MN Hockey TV, Matt and the rest of the crew for the sport of hockey in the state of Minnesota really is quite something. You can follow them on Twitter at MN Hockey TV. So I'm Joey Wright, and that'll do us for that'll do it for today's Joey Wright Show for us and yeah, whatever. Uh, that's all. Joey Wright Show back for more later on. Have a good one.